Hi, I'm Kevin Hill, and today we're going to do another fun painting. So let's get started. We'll start off today with a two inch brush and a little bit of yellow. And let's come right here to the center and just begin to drop in a nice little warm area to the sky. Now we don't need a whole lot of this color, just a, a very little bit. Doesn't take much. All right. Let that blend up and become very soft. Next, we'll tap the two inch brush through just the tiniest little bit of blue. And we'll just drop that right around, right around the rest of the color here. Now, as you can see, there's so little paint on there that's just barely, barely shows up. We don't want much. Now with the fan brush and a little bit of red and brown and white. Let's just begin to scrub in a few nice little clouds up here. Now we don't want a lot of paint on the canvas. We only want a little. We just want to stain it. Really rub that paint well into the canvas so that it won't come off. You won't be able to, won't be able to blend it around too much. It's going to stay there. And that's great. It gives us more freedom later when we want a highlighter or who knows what. We may want to do other things. It just gives us a nice little, nice little base to work from. Now with a clean two inch brush, we can very carefully just blend some of these hard edges away. We're really not looking to destroy the clouds, just to make them soft. And blend them into the sky just a little bit. Now with our filbert brush and a little bit of white and yellow, let's just begin adding on some very subtle highlights here to some of the edges of the, of the clouds. It's not going to take a lot of this highlight, just a little here and there. You don't have to do the whole thing. Mostly on the edges where the sunlight might hit and as it goes back it gets darker. Oh yeah. Nice. Now as you can see I have a nice little basic sketch of a couple of mountains up here. So I'll just take the filbert brush and a little bit of light gray and simply block them in. Now I really don't want to get these too dark. See that? Quite, quite pale. Keep them that way. And just scrub in a little bit of this color. We're going to come back and add some rocks and, and snow and all sorts of nice things on top. We can also work forward in this painting simply by scrubbing a little bit of black here in the foreground, creating more mountain shapes. It really helps to just kind of get the painting mapped in and ready to go for our highlights. Now we can begin adding just a little bit of snow to these mountains. It's not going to take a whole lot. It's really not going to take much at all. Just a little bit of blue and white, mostly white. Don't want this too dark. It's very pale back here. And we'll just sort of rub in some, some little shapes that are going to be ridges and just, just the shadow areas. Very soft. Now we'll just repeat the process with some white. Just scrub in a little tiny bit of this paint right around where you think the sunlight would hit. Really doesn't take a lot, just a tiny bit. Just like the blue color, really. Just put it in and around almost randomly. Just kind of worry about little, little shapes and outlines. All right. Now we'll just continue throwing in these nice little, nice little shadows and highlights here. This mountain, it's a little bit closer so we can see a little bit more detail. But maybe here, I don't know, maybe we'll kind of separate it out. There's a big peak there and maybe this peak back here is further away. So we can do that if we want to. If we change our mind again, we'll just, we'll paint over it or just change it as we go. Now with the fan brush and a little bit of yellow and green. Let's just begin tapping on a few little highlights on some, some very distant trees back here. All right, just tap on a little bit and really give it some nice sunlight out on a couple of the tips like that. Then allow a lot of them to go back into shadow. All right, a little bit more you can kind of tap into the dark and create some dark ridges that go up the mountain. You can do 
back and forth between the dark and light. It creates so much detail. Now with the knife and a little bit of nice light gray color, let's just begin to shape the side of this cliff here with some rock detailed highlights. Now, this is not gonna show up too bright. It's not, not all that bright. And that's great because I wouldn't wanna distract here. You can see the, the eye is already kind of flowing up in that area. And if you were to make this very bright, it would just take away from that. So we're gonna keep it kind of quiet today. Nice. Now we can begin to think about a little bit of water back here. Just take the, the one inch brush and a little bit of yellow and scrub it in. Maybe we wanna do just a tiniest touch of red just to kind of match the colors that are above in the sky. Now we can begin to work on some reflections here. So I just have the two inch brush and I'm pulling straight down, grabbing a little bit of the, the paint above, pull it right down into the water and then brush it across. Now obviously where the, where the land is smaller, the reflection is smaller. And over here, over here we get a nice big reflection, this nice dark cliff, and then gently across. Now with the fan brush and a little bit of black and maybe some green, we can come right here. We're gonna do something kind of different today. I'm gonna to show you how to paint in some evergreens that are really old and rough and who knows. So we'll just sort of do it like this. I'm pushing up, being a little bit more free and loose than normal. They're all, they're all bent and crooked. That's nice. It creates a pretty interesting effect. There. See, I'm just kind of twisting and smooshing the brush. I mean, that's, it doesn't get much more loose than this. It really doesn't. All right, and scrub in a little bit of land area. Now with our filbert brush and some black and brown, we can just block in this last little unpainted area. Now in my mind, we've got it like, like a little mini cliff here. Pretty tiny and it just comes right down. All right, maybe we'll just kind of have it taper off a little bit more gently there. We'll highlight that angle, then you'll be able to see it. All right, and we got some trees and various things growing off of this. Now with the filbert brush, we'll tap it right through some yellow and green. And with this color, we can just begin to shape a few of these trees with highlight. It doesn't take a whole lot, it really doesn't take much at all. All right. There, leave a lot of the dark. Don't want to cover up that dark. That's what really makes it stand out and look nice. Now using the knife, we can just drop in a lot of beautiful little rock textures, work back and forth between a nice light brown and a nice dark black. Creates a lot of contrast. Just work the highlights over the shadows and then the shadows back over if you want to. Do that a few times until, until it looks the way you want it to look. Now with our fan brush, we'll pick up a little bit of yellow and green. And we'll come right up here and just, just dab on a little bit of this nice yellow color. This really helps to show the sunlight on these old trees and really makes it come alive. Remember our sun is coming and hitting the left side here of the trees. Don't want to highlight the wrong side. Now with the knife and a little bit of brown and white, we can just begin to add in a lot of rocks down here. In my mind, this is kind of like a oh, big, big little collection of rocks. And we're just gonna start out with this kind of a, kind of a medium tone here. This is not, it didn't really look much like a highlight yet. We're gonna go ahead and put the highlights on after this middle tone is down. So we have three tones in the rocks instead of two. A little bit, ooh, this color has some white and some yellow in it, watch this. Oh yeah, look at that. You set that color right down on the highlight side and it really brings the rock alive. Nice. 
<laughs> just do this over and over again until we have a whole, whole big grouping of rocks. Now it's not too late to come right in here to the sky with a clean one inch brush loaded with a little bit of yellow. You just drop in almost like a, a nice little bright sun area back there. We need to be so careful, don't hit the mountains yet. Don't hit the mountains. Everything here is wet. You have to be a little bit more careful. All right, maybe some white. Let's just throw some white right in the middle. This kind of helps to to make the sky a little bit more interesting, a little more light coming through it. Then you can drift right over the mountain very carefully. Now that we're done playing around with the background, let's just take our fan brush here and scrub in a very, very faint, faint water line back here. More just like a shimmer of light. I'm not using the knife, at least not in the background. I may do it in the foreground. I don't know. This yellow, <laughs> this color has a little bit of yellow in it. Be careful that you don't mix with all the, the dark. There's a lot of dark down here. So be careful. Go over it and then stop and wipe your brush. Reload and then you can go back over it again. Now to give this painting a, a nice little finished and detailed look, let's just tap some grass in around these trees. Maybe some pretty tall grass even. Now we can vary the Vary the colors, throw in some black occasionally, especially out here on the edge. Really make it nice and dark out there. And watch this. You just pick up a little bit of light color, maybe a little more yellow in that, and watch this. Just punch in some light. Oh yeah, <laughs> that's fun. And then go back to your dark. Don't do the whole thing light. All right, well I think we're done. I had a lot of fun, I hope you did too. Don't forget to check out my website, my DVDs, and also my brush line. And thanks for watching.